Creating graphs doesn't sound too creative, but actually it can be a very rewarding design task. Illustrator offers a lot of useful tools to create beautiful graphs that can be used in infographics and presentations. In this video, I am going to walk you through the most important aspects of designing appealing graphs. This tutorial is part of a comprehensive online course called Adobe Illustrator Masterclass. You can check it out and try the free trial if you want to learn everything there is to know about this amazing industry standard application. Another area where Adobe Illustrator is used most commonly is data visualization or infographics as we also call it, which is high in demand nowadays as we would like to see everything that we are presented with nice looking, easy to digest and clean. So most of the time it is not enough to just show boring graphs. You have to inject some interest and give the data some added meaning by adding icons or just generally working on the style of your visuals. Luckily, you don't need to use any other applications to bring in your data and then to start actually turning them into graphs or pie charts because Illustrator has its own set of graph tools. So this big set here we haven't used so far. I am going to open this up into a palette by using the little arrow next to it. And then we are going to talk about a few of the settings of these tools. First of all, let me just move to the side and create a new artboard just so we have some place to experiment on. And I'm going to start with the most basic graph, the column graph tool. So I select this and then I just simply click and drag to define the area in which I would like to see the graph. Now you can see we get something similar to an Excel sheet with cells where I can put the values in. I'm going to keep the first one at one, then the next one maybe three, then the next one maybe four, then two, and then seven. So once I have these values in, in separate columns, I can click on apply and immediately we will start to see these values showing up. If it's a comparison chart, we would have more values in the next row. So let me just put that in again, something different how it's been changing these values and then I click on tick again. So now we will have the first row of values on the left and the second row is represented with these columns here on the right. If you want to bring in data instead of manually typing it in, you can also use this icon here, import data, and it can be a couple of different file formats like text or CSV. When I'm ready adding the data, I can close this window. And normally I would switch to the direct selection tool with which we can select parts of the design, like that column there. I'm going to change it to a different color. And the only thing is that when you start to do these manual changes, it doesn't necessarily apply to the other set of columns. So you would have to do this manually and make sure that you match the colors if they need to be matching. Another thing that I like to remove are the outlines. So I'm just going to set the stroke to none for all of these columns. And I'm going to change the colors for them a little bit further. So I'm going to use these colors and then for this and the next one, I'm going to use maybe orange. And for the last one, again, I'm going to use more like a magenta tone like this. Another thing you can do is of course change the fonts being used. So if I select all of these numbers here on the left, I can change them to whatever font I feel would work better. So I'm just going to choose something that looks very different like this one. And the cool thing is that because it was created within Illustrator, it will still have the data and we can make changes to the data. So what I normally do is to select the whole graph then right click and choose data. Then we can get back to the values and I'm just going to change one of these values, maybe this one to something much higher, like 12, press enter and then accept the change. And you will see immediately everything will update. And notice how the style that I defined for the numbers will be continued. 
and also the colors will be kept the way I've set them up. Now let's have a look at a similar example, but now creating a pie chart. The tool is called pie graph. So selecting that, I can draw it here. And in this case, I'm going to type in a couple of things. Let's say these are products that's been sold. So then we can decide the values. So if I click on the tick to apply this, what you will see is that not only does this generate the pie, but also creates the legend or the information, which gives a good indication of what these colors actually mean or what they correspond to. So I can close this now and I'm going to do the same thing as before, selecting all of these elements and I'm going to remove the stroke from them. That's the first thing normally what I do. I'm going to also change the font like Futura might look nice. Maybe move them slightly further away from those points. And then comes a point when I change the colors. So I select both the actual value and the information rectangle. And I pick an existing color from the other chart. Then again, I select these two and then another color. And it looks obviously much better than before, but it's still not as sophisticated as some of these designs that we had here on the left. So how can we improve this even further? Now, there are many ways to do this, but after a point, you will most likely have to sacrifice the connection to the original data to be able to make the changes you want. So let me give you a simple example. Let's say I would like to create a hole within this pie. So something more similar to a ring like this one here, or even the other one on the left. So to be able to do that, you will have to use object ungroup instead of expand, which would be the most common way of breaking up a more complex feature and then be able to make custom changes. So in this case, it's ungroup. You will get a warning that once you do that, the data won't be accessible anymore, which is fine. I know that we have to make this sacrifice to be able to do our custom changes. And now that we ungrouped our graph, we will be able to access every element inside it. Plus we can make our custom changes like creating a circle here, holding down Alt and Shift together and selecting all of these shapes together. Now I can use the Shape Builder holding down Alt cutting out the center part. And then let's not stop there. Select this ring. I will group them together. That's Command or Control G. And once they form the group, I can go up to Effect, 3D, Extrude. Having the preview on, we will see immediately the 3D effect. And we can turn it around, maybe set it up something like that. I will go into more options and I will also change the lighting to make sure that the side and the front faces look different. Now here's one problem I can see already that this gray color doesn't really work well in 3D. So what we will do is to go into the objects appearance panel options and turn off the 3D for a while, select that part and also the corresponding block and I will change this to a different color, maybe something like a darker blue or brown even. Maybe that's something that will look different from all the rest. So now we can select this group again, turn back the 3D effect. And now if I want to break it apart a bit, I can also do that. Once again, I turn off the effect while I do this. And using the direct selection tool, I can break this apart, maybe just one of these ring elements. The, the others can stay together and it might be actually better to break a smaller piece out or two of them. So now if we turn back the 3D option again, we will see the exploded view. So that is a typical workflow that you can follow. Start with one of these graph tools, add your data, then customize the design to a point where it's still accessing the data like this one here on the top, where I can always go into data and make changes. Or if that's not enough and you need to go even beyond that, then remember to ungroup your graph first and then you will be able to do even more complex effects like this 3D extrusion 
or the subtraction of the center part of the pie chart. And try mixing the different techniques we've learned about, like applying graphic styles is another great thing you can do. If I select these two points here, or columns, I can go into graphic styles, and then choose maybe this one, the dusk, which immediately makes it look much cooler. I can even apply the same graphic style for all of these. And then just to make sure that the colors are different, I would select two of them and use recolor artwork and then go into linking these colors together and just move them around on the ring. Let's do this once again with these two. Recolor artwork, edit, link, and move them along. Click OK, and so on and so forth. So that's all I wanted to show you about graphs. And in the next video, we will look at the blend tool.